administration gets paid to not do their job because they don't do their job and they have an attitude when they have to do their job. Like, Everybody, so I'm going to be telling you why I am leaving my HBCU. I'm leaving Tennessee State University. I'm going to tell you what happened in order for me to have been leaving. And then I'm going to tell you like the pros and cons of going to HBCU. First of all, let me say the pros first. So the good thing about going to an HBCU or whatever, especially if you're black, is because you get to go to class. You have black students. You have black people on campus. You feel comfortable to be yourself. You feel comfortable to wear what you want to wear. Because uh, sometimes when you're not around your people or whatever, you might not feel as comfortable being yourself as you would like at a PWI as a black person. So you definitely like comfortability and like free to be yourself. Then of course the atmosphere is great. They play, they play urban music. You know what I'm saying? They have courtyard Wednesdays, chick fried chicken Wednesday. They just have, it's the atmosphere. The atmosphere is great. I feel like the experience is great. I don't, well, I kind of do regret going there, but not because of, I kind of regret going there because of academic wise, but like building relationships and like the experience, I don't regret going. And the parties, of course, you know, it's just a good atmosphere, great, you know? But I am gonna tell you guys why I'm leaving. So the reason why I'm leaving is because I cannot, I can no longer do nursing at TSU. And, oh my God, it's a squirrel. But, um, I can't do nursing at TSU. And the reason why is because you cannot get a C or D on any science course on your first try. I cannot retake any class. If I get a C or D, it's just over with. You are not eligible for the nursing program anymore. So I did get a D in human anatomy in which I did not know that I couldn't get a C or I mean a D or an F in any of my science courses which I shouldn't be getting no D or F anyway and I really don't know how that happened because that class wasn't even that hard but I feel like if I really would have known because nobody told me that so like, I'm going when I started going to TSU uh, my sister had went to TSU but she went for like a year and that was like three years ago, four years ago. And my mom was TSU, but she went to TSU like tens years ago, like tens of years ago. So it's like basically when I'm going, when I started going, I'm going, I don't know anything. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm starting out fresh. I'm I'm going in blind. So I don't even know how to drop a class. I didn't know the last day to drop a class. Uh, the last day I could drop a class, I didn't really know too much how to contact my advisor. I didn't know, I didn't know how to do anything basically. If I would have probably, if I would have known how to drop a class or something, I probably would have dropped those classes and I probably would have, or that one class, and I probably would have still been eligible for the nurse program. But then again, I had a, I was on a scholarship. I lost my scholarship, y'all. I was on a scholarship and I needed like 15 credit hours or 60 credit hours, something like that. And when you first, um, when you first enrolled to TSU, they put you in their classes. You don't pick your own classes when you first start school. I think that's for everybody. I don't think that's just a TSU thing. I think that's a university thing. Uh, they put you in your classes. You don't pick your classes. So I was on scholarship and I had like the minimum amount of credit hours. So if I was to drop a class, I would have been ineligible for my scholarship. So I couldn't even drop a class even if I knew how to do it. Okay, so yeah, so I had got a D in human anatomy, so I was eligible for the nursing program, but I was not told that. One of the reasons why I was not doing good in class. So for one, lecture classes, I don't do good. That's just a personal issue. That's not, that has nothing to do with administration. But the teachers do not teach at TSU. They, they just talk and then tell you have a good day. So like, they'll be like, like, you know, teachers are actually supposed to make sure you're following along. They're supposed to like quiz you in class, like little pop quizzes, they post to, they post to make sure that you're keeping up with the curriculum. The teachers at TSU don't do that. They just be like, your femur is here, your trachea is here, and this is here, and this is that, and this is what it do, and have a good day. That's how the teachers teach at TSU. They don't really teach, they just tell, I feel like they're reading off of a book, like, 
they they don't really know the information themselves. They're just reading it out loud. If I why am I paying to have a reader? I know how to read. Like they best like they will click on a PowerPoint, click through the PowerPoint and read the PowerPoint, and then be like, "Have a good day." I could have clicked through the PowerPoint and read the PowerPoint myself. How are you teaching me? You're not teaching me anything. You're not making sure I'm keeping up with the information. You're not. But people be saying college is supposed to, like, it's kind of like you're doing it on your own type stuff. So I don't know if that's just a TSU thing, but they need to fix that. If it's a, if it's a, um, like, university thing, if it's a, like, college thing, they need to do better with that because ain't nobody learning nothing. Like, we're actually in school for our career. We're not in school, like, for a babysitter like it is uh, for, like, high school and stuff. Like, we actually need to know the information. So then if I ha if I am confused or whatever, I would email the teacher to ask them like, oh, I don't understand the assignment or whatever. And they would take hella long to email back. And then when they finally do email back, email back saying something like, oh, I explained the instructions in class or, oh, the instructions should be on e-learn. But obviously I'm not understanding what like the instructions. So you put, you need to explain it to me again, but that's how they will respond. So there wasn't really any help for me when I would actually ask questions, cause I wouldn't ask um, often, but when I would actually ask questions, that's like the response I would get and it would take hella long for them to uh, like email back. I have some teachers, I had some teachers that's like, like I said, it's like they're reading off a script. So if I had a teacher, I have a teacher now, I'm not gonna say no, like, you know what I'm saying? But I have a teacher now where she's using somebody else's curriculum and she would be like, oh, I don't really understand what she mean, the way she put it, but blah, 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 blah. Like she's reading off of her stuff. Like she's not even a real teacher. I feel like they just took anybody with a degree was like, here, you, here, I like teach. Like, you know what I'm saying? I didn't even know how to look, I didn't even know how to get tutoring or none of that. Like I didn't know how to do nothing, y'all. So uh, now let's get into my advisement and all of that. So when I would go to my advisor, she would do stuff like, oh are you sure you want to do nursing like are you sure that's what you want to do do you have a plan b do you have another major you might want to do like are you sure you can get good grades are you getting good grades like are you sure like she was ba basically she was trying to like i feel like she was lightweight like trying to make it seem like i'm not capable of being successful in a nursing program and that's not advice you're not advising me to do anything she was basically like i feel like she was discouraging me like you won't be able to do it so it's like and my own advisor don't believe in me. Why, like, why would I believe in myself? Like, my own advisor don't believe in me type stuff. So, so I just, I listened to her and I changed my major to biology, y'all. By the way, she did not let me know that I was ineligible for the nursing program after I had got that D in human, human anatomy. She did not, she did not tell me that I was ineligible for the nursing program anymore. I went on my own and decided to change my major to biology because I was like, okay, I could just go to uh, medical school. Cause my dream job is, um, well, it was, cause none more. My dream job was to be a plastic surgeon. So I was like, I could just go to school for plastic surgeon and just go to medical school, just do biology, uh, pre-med or whatever. So I changed my major on my own. But when I did that, I instantly regretted it. And over the summer, like I had changed my major right before we went to summer. And over the summer, I was emailing and trying to do all types of stuff to get to change my major back. And I was trying to get my uh, scholarship appeal, which I didn't get it appealed. They denied me. So, and then when I was trying to, uh, they took hella long to email back. It was a lot of confusion, a lot of like too much. Get back into the nursing program or whatever. So I would just make the decision that I was gonna leave. Now I'm gonna get into like administration and stuff. About the administration, y'all, the administration is terrible. They will take you through loops and hoops to get done something very simple, something very easy that they could have done themselves. Like basically the administration gets paid to not do their job because they don't do their job and they have an attitude when they have to do their job. Like, I'll give y'all an example. When I changed my major to biology, I had to get added to this class. I didn't have an English class, I think, so I was trying to get her to add me to a class. Uh, when I came inside the, I mean the um, keen or whatever, I was standing in front of her. She didn't have nobody. She wasn't helping nobody. She was sitting there typing on her laptop. So I was standing in front of her. I didn't sit down right in front of her. I was standing in front of her, and she, I was standing for like five minutes, and she was saying nothing. So I was like, "Excuse me, me, I need help, but I didn't know if you were busy or not." And then she responded and said, "I'm always busy." I'm like, okay. And then I told her, I was like, I need to get to a class or whatever. She was like, 
It's no way on God's green earth that they will allow me to add you to a class. Yeah, I promise that I didn't come to her with no attitude or none of that. Like, she just straight off the bed had an attitude, and I didn't, I was like, huh? So she's like, it's no way on God's green earth that I will be able to add you to a class. And I'm like, okay, but I need to get added to the class now. And she was like, well, I can't do it, basically, like, basically no help. So I was like, okay, you know what? And I just got up and I walked away. I didn't say nothing, I just got up and I walked away. That's just an example of like how they don't want to do their job. Like, or let's say one time I had to get, so I didn't get added to that class or whatever, so I went to somebody else to get added to a class. And when, once I went to them, I asked them, can they add me to the class? Then they like, oh no, you need to go to this person. They can add you to the class. So it's like, they don't, they don't do their job. Like they gonna send you on the wild goose chase to get a simple thing done, like y'all could have just went logged in and added me to the class, but instead you're gonna send me on a wild goose chase to get me at, to add me to one simple class. It's like they don't they get paid to do absolutely nothing. I think that's a TSU thing though. Well people say that's an HBCU thing, but TSU got that bad. They send you around the world to get something done and then they have an attitude when they actually need to do their job. Then on top of that, y'all, the um the the buildings and stuff are very, very old, but they said that they were holding they were holding money from TSU. They said they are supposed to get like $2 billion or something that they didn't get. So I don't know, maybe it's because of that, but they've been building new dorms and stuff. So it's like they have money to build new dorms, but not um, upgrade what they already have. So I don't know, it's really some BS. But um, yeah, but the buildings and stuff are very old. Like, especially in like the dorms, the dorms are terrible living. Like they, and, and in the buildings, it's either heat or uh, AC, it's not both. You can't like, you can't turn the temperature down and then it blows air and then if it gets cold, you can turn the temperature up. It's not like that. It's either you get heat or you get AC. It's not in between. It stinks sometimes, like they have leakage and it's just like very old and disgusting the way that you have to live in these dorms. Yeah, it's a lot more cons than pros, and I'm actually excited to leave. And my camera about to die, so that's just gonna be the end of this. If y'all want another part or whatever of me telling y'all more stuff, I would definitely do that. But uh, my camera's about to die, so I can't really say too much else, and I don't have no batteries, so yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I um, informed you. It's not really too bad to issue. I was just literally stating straight facts. And unfortunately, the facts are not good facts. That's gonna be it for this. If y'all want another part, let me know down below. I might make this a separate video because I'll be recording for 25 minutes, so I don't know. But let me hurry up for my camera die. So um, comment down below what y'all want to know, if uh, like about the school or whatever. If y'all have any questions, I might make another video about it, or I might just respond. If you do comment, I do respond to all my comments. I see every single comment, so don't be afraid to comment. Um, comment your favorite part of the video. Just leave a comment down below. And so, uh, follow me on all my social medias at I am Kelly B. That is TikTok, Instagram, and now I have Twitter. And I only have two freaking followers on there, but I love y'all because that means y'all probably came from my YouTube channel because I don't promote my t Twitter on my Instagram. So, if you follow me on Twitter, I obviously know that you came from this video. And, um, subscribe to me and turn my post notifications on to know every time I post a video. Okay, bye, y'all.